Hey everybody, Victor here, and today I have for you the first YouTube guide for Croatia in EU4. So for those of you who haven't played in Europe for quite a while, or have at least not played anything near Croatia, Croatia starts off as a personal union under Hungary, which means that your first goal is to not be a personal union under Hungary any longer. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up and pointing this out is because there is actually another nation I want to talk about kind of in the same position to show one very important thing. Now, those nations are actually up here in the Lowlands. They are Flanders, Brabant, and Holland. These three start off as a junior partner in a personal union under Burgundy. And when Charles de Burgoyne ends up passing, when he dies, it can trigger the Burgundian succession event. What happens in that event is they instantaneously inherit all three of these tags. All three, Flanders, Brabant, and Holland, which means they cease to exist. Unless they are a player. If, for instance, Holland is a player, Flanders and Brabant, they will be integrated, they'll be gone. However, Holland will remain independent of that. They won't be integrated. Meaning, your game does not end. Hungary gets a similar event, where they become a personal union under Austria voluntarily. It happens about 10 years after games start, plus a couple of months. And it's 25% chance of happening if this guy survives. If he survives, it can happen. The problem with this is, is that in that event, they also inherit Croatia. The difference is, is that if you are a player in Croatia, you lose. In other words, you need to be independent from Hungary in 10 years. That must occur. If it, occur, it does not occur and they choose to fall under Austria, your run is over. Period. There, there's no ins, out, nothing. It's You're done. As a result, yeah, you're kind of playing against the clock. So let's go ahead and start and get through the tedium part of it, and then I can move on to the diplomacy part of it. Your navy is completely hot garbage and useless. Four cogs. Who are you navally invading, and who are you transporting your your forces to? Nobody. So you don't need the cogs. Galleys. Your two galleys is not going to help you or win any naval fights for you. This does absolutely nothing. You don't need the galleys. The light ship, while it can be useful, the fact is, is that your trade power and your income is really low anyway. Having one trade ship is not going to somehow make you tons of money. So it's better to simply get rid of it and not pay the maintenance on it at all, and not even worry about it. Just be done with it. Now, you have a merchant here in Pest that is collecting zero. Why this is, I really don't know why this is the default, because you only have three provinces here in the Pest node, none of which are trade centers, none of which are high development. So just move that straight over here to Ragusa and collect there. Don't, don't waste your time in Pest. It's absolutely not worth it. This will give you a little bit more money. A little bit. Now let's talk about estate privileges. If you've seen this channel before, you know this is pretty much stock standard. You have the prestige because you're going to need it, and it's good to have it no matter what because, yeah, prestige is nice. You have the free enterprise, oversight, and the supremacy over the crown for loyalty. And then you have the Monopoly here. The Monopoly gives you loyalty, it gives you one more cannibalism, but also it also gives you six and a half ducats, which is eight years of income for your livestock, and you're losing two. In other words, over a 10-year period, you're losing about two ducats. So you're losing less than 0.1 ducats a month. So go ahead and hand this out. If you're going to go bankrupt because of 0.1 ducats a month over two years, yeah, I'm sorry but there's other problems. And that is about all you need to know with that. Now let's talk about your missions. These missions are actually pretty easy to understand. You see, the moment you declare your independence war, this mission will be complete. You just have to not be a subject nation and you qualify for that simply during that fight. Now this gives you claims on Herzegovina and Bosnia. Then you have other ones here where you simply have to get your cores back here and that'll give you a claim on Ragusa, Prestige, and it just expands from there until you start going into Italy, and you get permanent claims in all the Balkans, and then you have to fight off the Turks. Seems relatively simple. And then, of course, you're punching into 
the north of the Balkans and they start heading into Italy. This, by the way, if you form Dalmatia, is the exact same tree. So your mission tree will not change if you form Dalmatia. You'll just get really nice ideas. The other missions I wanted to point out are actually these two right here. These are relatively their own, but you need to be aware of them. The first one here is simply get in this state, which you start off, there's four provinces, but you start off with three. Having three of those provinces be 10 development. The reward for doing that is you have 5% off all your development costs for the rest of the game. This remains even if you change tags. So if you become Dalmatia, who also has 5% off, you will have 10. If you somehow push all the way to form the Netherlands, and they're 10% in their national ideas, you'll have the 5 from this, plus the 10 in their national ideas. So you'll have 15. So as such, yeah, starting off as Croatia means you are probably the best nation to play tall. Especially if you look at the terrain map mode, you have a lot of grasslands, farmlands, and this area, meaning just right here, and then after you get into the Polish and Lithuanian area, you are the best suited to play exceptionally tall. So this right here can probably make you number one great power if you play your cards right. So, let's go ahead and then last, the last mission, just before I forget about it, you simply have to finish all the building slots in your capital, which start off as two. Meaning, marketplace and temple, yes, I am recommending actually building a temple here, because you'll be pillaging a lot, and you get six total dev for free, and a level two center of trade. Which is very nice, considering the fact you need to actually dev a lot in order to get it to level two nowadays. So this will save you quite a bit. So get these missions done. It's absolutely worth it. Especially this 5% off dev cost over here. Though, whether you choose to rush that or not is up to you. Because you can get this pretty low, especially since this one is a cloth province on farmlands. So, moving on. Let's talk about diplomacy. As I said before, your number one goal is to become independent. This is in large part going to depend on who happens to rival Hungary, but it is not entirely based on that. If you have the macro builder here, go in here and look at who will support your independence. You can find people in here that are awfully close, like Poland. Usually if there are other people that will end up rivaling them or wanting their land, and the people that it can be range from Castile and Aragon to Bohemia, Poland, Lithuania, Ottomans, Venice. And the reason Venice wants in is because they want your land so they will support your independence from Hungary because otherwise they have to attack Hungary and call in Austria. So they will help you with your independence war to then break their alliance to try and attack you. I'm not kidding. They will do it for some reason. You just have to improve relations with them for a while. But if you notice... There is at least one person that all I need to do is get a little bit higher and they'll join. The way you do that, go to Hungary, scornfully insult them. And now Poland will support your independence on day one. Does this mean that you are good to go and you should declare independence? Absolutely not. I will tell you this now, I have tested this out. And Aragon, Naples, Poland, and Lithuania lost against Austria-Hungary. And there were no one else, just those two. They lost. The reason why is the AI is incredibly dumb. So if you declare it, you are taking a risk if you are not massively outnumbering them that they are not going to know what to do and they will refuse to engage in fights. The other people that you can end up having as allies are Ottomans and Bohemia. Castile and Aragon will probably join fairly quickly. You simply have to usually scornfully insult them and then they're willing to jump in. Venice is just like Bohemian Ottomans in that you're going to have to improve their relations because usually they will not support you immediately. The difference here is Venice is able to join in once you get that opinion high enough. Ottomans and Bohemia, however, if you notice, have a truce with Hungary, which means even if they like me enough, they can't join because of that truce. As a result, you need to improve relations with them First, to make them like you enough, but second, you're going to have to wait for that truce to expire. 
and that takes five years. So you're in for a wait. Next, focus military power. You have a chance through the Hungry event to end up getting a better ruler than a 000. However, even if you do and he happens to be military based, you want to have a higher military tech or be the first to the military tech between Austria and Hungary. The reason why is they're usually going to be the ones that ally. And I mean usually as in I've only seen once out of the hundred or so run-throughs I've attempted with this just to make sure I know what I'm talking about where they did not ally. So you are almost guaranteed to have to fight Austria. Next, you have a choice here on whether or not you are going to improve relations with Austria. Basically, the question that you have is, are you going to co-belligerate them? If you co-belligerate Austria, you have the ability to make them spit out tags. In other words, you could make them release to roll, which will remove their gold mine, making it easier for you to fight them in the future because they lose both the gold mine here, re severely reducing their income, which limits their ability to have a massive army, but it also takes out this fort and this fort, meaning they are suddenly less able to actually resist an invasion, which is generally a good thing. The other thing you can do is you can try and take land from them, but you have to actually get your independence in the main war, which means it's taking land. And that means you need to give land to your allies, because whenever you've declared an independence war, it is a promise to give land to your allies. So it's up to you whether or not you actually want to give them any land. If you don't want to, you can't take land from Austria directly, but when you separate piece them out, you can. I would recommend not co-belligerating them. Even if they don't have a bunch of allies, which in this case they do, usually you don't want to have it involved in there. You just don't want to deal with it. In this case, they even have Poland as an ally, and I don't want to deal with that. Instead, I'd rather have Poland come and help me and fight Austria. So, I'm going to improve with Austria, their relations. If you uh, co try and co-belligerate them when they're above 100, you're going to lose a stability and gain war exhaustion, so it's not worth it. But the reason you do it is because when you're at war, if there's anyone here that they're rivaled against that you might be allied to, such as the Ottomans, you break that rivalry, so after it's done, you don't have the you're allied to a rival debuff. If you have it high enough, after the conflict is done, they may ally you, or you can get the opinion high enough to join the HRE. If you're able to join the HRE, fantastic, you're safe. No one's going to attack you. Not even Hungary, because Austria will defend you. Period. Second, you're able to then hop over and take out somebody like Ferrara, or jump over to Ven through Venice into Florence or up into Italy or then even into Switzerland and then keep pushing around. So joining the HRE will open up expansion opportunities. Now at this point there really isn't a whole lot more to discuss. It's simply waiting for the five years to expire. I will say it is up to you if you choose to wait for the Ottomans and for Bohemia. I would usually recommend it. It comes at a risk. That risk is basically twofold. One, if they happen to get into a conflict themselves, say the Ottomans attack Kandar, or they get attacked by Kandar by some weird fluke, they will not join or support your independence. They will, they will join the war, but they will not support your independence if you ask. So you have to wait for both you and them to be out of a war, or you can't ask them which can delay, and again, you're under a clock. Second, it is five years, and both Hungary and the Ottomans want this land. As you can tell by your mission tree, you also want this land. That said, having the Ottomans as an ally, if they're available, can be crucial, because then you can expand down here without worrying about the Ottomans suddenly attacking you but you can also use them to, say, attack Venice, or Serbia, or Bosnia, if they're allied to Serbia, or Herzegovina, if they're allied to Wallachia, which tends to happen. So the Ottomans become a useful ally to basically 
punch the rivals or the enemies that you don't want to have to deal with. Lastly, even if the Ottomans are not available and only Bohemia is, you also want Bohemia because Bohemia, with their vassals, once they actually get ready to fight, can usually keep up somewhat with Austria, making it a very fast war to knock Austria out of the war. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it, even though we're getting awfully close. I will see you guys once I am ready to actually declare here. See you guys then. And welcome back. So, it's been a couple of years, and there are a couple of things I forgot to mention that are easy to mention now. You start the game off about 2,000 below your manpower cap, and you're waiting for about 5,000, for about five years. You're making about 100 a month, which means you could hire about three units over that time and not waste any manpower recovery. I'd recommend you do that, because why not? Also, you may need to hire the free company to get the Ottomans liking you enough, thinking you're strong enough for them to bother allying you. If that's the case, that's when you take the burger loans and then hire them. You won't need them past actually getting the Ottomans to support your independence, but you may need to actually hire them. At this point, I now have my guys in there ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and declare. As you can see, you will usually be able to almost double them in terms of numbers. Which means you basically don't actually have to fight this if you don't want to. I don't even need the free company anymore. So I'm going to go in instead and retreat back. You have a fort here and use that to keep your troops safe. If they actually come to siege you down, defensive edict this. And you're pretty much just waiting for them to handle it. Again, Austria, your main goal here is you're not going to have a whole lot of war participation and money itself is dependent on what the war participation division is. Since you're not going to have any, you don't need to have it going. So it does not matter. Give me one second here. As a result, it doesn't really matter, so go for it. If, for whatever reason, the Hungarians get a ruler which they did they have a regent here that means when you declare your independence your legitimacy is going to be hot garbage this mission here will give you 20 legitimacy getting you out of the absolute toilet if however they remain the 000 regency council when you declare your independence you have 100 legitimacy it's just going to be 100 legitimacy period and this guy's pretty much randomized so, you can have a great ruler, you can have a garbage ruler, all of that. You're not going to have anything particularly stable about that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let this work go, because that's about it. And again, Austria, the basic peace deal here, I would recommend, since you're not co-belligerating them, is war reparations. And then, you can't release nations, but you go to a null treaties and you revoke their rival with anybody that you're allied to. Because if you look at the opinion, they don't like you because you're allied to a rival. Once you break that rival, suddenly they can't rival them anymore, which means you'll get plus 25, the hostile relations will remove, that'll be about 100-ish, and you'll be very, very close to being able to join the HRE. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again, because watching this play out while I sit still and make sure they don't see me is not exactly enthralling entertainment so i will see you guys once this is done so i can show you what to do after the war is over see you then and welcome back so war's over austria i peaced out for war reparations and for them to break their rivalry with the ottomans while I could take money, again, it's based on war participation, and my war participation is zero. So I wouldn't have gotten a single ducat. It would have paid them, but... Eh. The war reparations, however, does go to me, which, you know, definitely helps with my income. A ducat and a half a month? That's not bad. And by breaking the Ottoman rivalry... I wouldn't have had a ally to rival, but then they rivaled Bohemia. 
Now comes the piecing out hungry part. In this, grant independence, so, you know, the point of the war, and then also break any alliances. I recommend Austria because, yeah, you don't want to be dealing with Austria the next time you go in on Hungary. But more importantly, there's really nothing else to take. Again, you can take money, but you're not going to see even any of it. There's no reason to. You can break more alliances if you want to wait, but again, there's no real reason to. So just peace out. Once you're done with the war, go ahead and dissolve the Bohemian Alliance if you're in my situation to improve your relations with Austria. Because it will spike it a little bit because I'm no longer allied to one of their rivals. And then if I want to join the HRE, it's just simply going over here and telling France that they suck. And then, all of a sudden, I have over the required amount, and I'm in the HRE. And this opens up my expansion opportunities. As you can see, I'm spying on Ferrara. The reason why is their allies are Aragon, which, yeah, that will eventually drop once they form Spain, or the Iberian Wedding happens, and Bologna, people I can take out. I also have over here Herzegovina, which is allied to Wallachia, which means if I co-belligerate them, I might be able to get the Ottomans coming in, because they want that land. I just have to wait for them and their war exhaustion to go down. Or I can simply take them on myself directly. Wallachia does not really have the manpower or the forces that I have available to take them on, and Herzegovina, they really don't. So it comes down to I just need to hire a couple of more troops and take them out. When it comes to Bosnia, they are allied to Serbia and Sili, but that means I can take out Sili and move on. At this point, it really is just finding the targets of opportunity. However, if you have the Ottomans on your side, you have another one that's relatively easy to go for, and that's Venice. Because usually the Ottomans want to come in and take on Venice. Here, because they're allied to Aragon, that is obviously a problem. But once Aragon is out, it becomes a relatively even fight. And then it's pretty much just take them on, try and beat Venice, and get your cores down here back. And when you're in the middle of that war, take out Ragusa. Because then their guarantee does not matter, and you can snipe them out. However, obviously, you'll need to get a claim on them first, which is what the Herzegovina part is for. So take out Herzegovina, in this case, Wallachia would be fought too. So you can at least then take Ragusa in the middle of that war. Otherwise, you have to get through Venice first and then take Ragusa, which you can still do with the Ottomans. But after that, it's simply expanding, flipping to Dalmatia at some point for the better ideas. You'll keep the mission tree, slowly expand into Italy. If you want to, form Tuscany for the very nice deving ideas, which are the exact same as Florence, if you weren't aware. So that dev cost goes up, that dev cost increase, which is very nice. And then suddenly you can play exceptionally tall, because again, you will be in the... You will have all that dev cost reduction, but you'll also have all of these nice farmland and grassland provinces, and you'll also have it in Italy with the best trade nodes in the game. And that's all you need. With that, you can play Croatia into basically anything you want. Dalmatia, Italy, remaining Dalmatia, reform Austria, and play as a better Austria because you'll have less, you'll have more dev cost reduction, and go from there. I hope this helps you guys out in your games. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I will absolutely be doing more of it. If you have a specific country, let me know below. I'd be more than happy to make it. I have also made a Discord server. The link is in the description. I'd love to see you all there. But thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.